evening, hello, and welcome to This State in History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by other historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the Smart Device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thisday.com. For links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Xander, and you are you. Today is Freya's Day, a.k.a. Friday, February 10th, 2023. Moving on up into the history, shall we? Let's go. Starting off in the year 60, St. Paul was thought to have been shipwrecked at Malta. Okay. We also got the Prussian homage. 1525, Albert of Prussia pledged a personal oath to Sigismund I the Old and was invested with the duchy for, uh, for himself and his heirs. Okay, well that's pretty cool. In 1720, Edmund Haley was appointed as the second astronomer royal at the Greenwich Observatory. He was an astronomer, mathematician, and physicist. And uh, Haley, so uh, I believe this is the guy whose namesake uh, we use for Haley's Comet. 1746, the Pelham brothers resigned from the British government, but resumed office when King George II backed down. Huh. Well, isn't that a statement right there? As soon as he's gone, they come back. So, yeah. 1778, Voltaire returned to Paris to great acclaim after an absence of 20 years. And he was an Enlightenment philosopher. So, clearly he was enjoyed by the people for whatever he philosophized about. Got uh, the Battle of Cham. Paubert, 1814, during the Napoleonic Wars, the Battle of Chalpaubert, the French defeated the Russians. All right. Uh, one decade later, in 1824, Simon Bolivar was named director or named dictator by the Congress of Peru. E. So, military and political leader. Yeah, I, I recognize that picture. So, he was not a good guy. Got uh, 1859, the Indian Mutiny. General Horsford defeated uh, Begum of Oud and Nana Shaib in Indian Mutiny. Huh. All right. Uh, uh, mutineers were executed by the Bengal Horse Artillery in a painting by Orlando Noor. And as you can see here, uh, they were literally strapped to the front of cannons. And the cannons were set off. And, yeah, um exactly what you're envisioning in your head. It was brutal. 1862, Julius Benedict and Dion uh, Bocuclaus opera Lily of or Lily of Killarney premiered at Covenant Garden in London. Okay. Hold on a second. I see California. No, I did not see California. Uh, oh, I did see California. 1870, the city of Anaheim in California was incorporated for the first time but disincorporated after two years as the tax burden was too high. Huh. Alright. And 1870, here we go. The Young Women's Christian Association, YWCA, formed in New York City. So why is there females in the YMCA? They have their own little segregation little spots. You know, that's not enough. Now they have to start invading other places and then start calling for equality. No, you have the YWCA. Piss off. Uh, 1879, the first electric car, or the first electric art, arc light was used in a California theater. First electric arc light. Let's check that out. What was, what is an electric arc light? So, oh, one of these, okay. All right, so the first one uh, was used specifically in a California theater. Cool. 1879 as well, Henry Morton Stanley departed for the Congo. And I believe this is the guy who said uh, Dr. Livingstone, I presume? Not sure. Henry Morton Stanley. It sounds familiar. Uh, one year later, in 1880, Pope Leo XIII published encyclical Arcanum about Christian marriage. Ah. Uh, we, we need some of that back today. So everything's gone, you know, crazy. So. Got a boxing title fight. 1908, Canadian world heavyweight boxing champion Tommy Burns knocks out Englishman Jack Palmer in round four in London for his eighth title defense. Cool. We also have Gandhi's Passive Resistance, 1914. In accordance with the understanding reached by General J.C. Smuts and Mahatma Gandhi, 60 passive resistance prisoners were released from Pieter Martinsburg Prison. 40 passive resistors were re uh, released in uh, Durban, 8 in Newcastle, and 11 in Port Elizabeth. Alright, a mass release. Nice. 
1915, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson protested the, uh, to Britain on the use of U.S. flags on British merchant ships to deceive the Germans. Yes, I agree. But then again, this is coming from the guy who brought in the IRS, so, you know, we should probably not listen to him. The biggest oil gusher ever in 1916? The biggest oil well gusher ever? Edward L. Donahue's Cerro Azul No. 4 first gushes 600 feet in the air near Tampico, Mexico. Huh. So let's see here. Cerro Azul No. 4 oil gush. Let's see if there's a picture of that. Oh, there is. That is an impressive gush. <laughs> Never thought I'd ever say that. 1918, Leon Trotsky declared that Russia is leaving World War I, or at that time it was known as a Great War, the war to end all wars. So, give me one moment, I am about to sneeze. My apologies about that, you know, when you need a sneeze, you need a sneeze. And I'd rather uh, not sneeze audibly, at least on camera. So, we got a conference of interest in 1927. U.S. President Calvin Coolidge asked for a second disarmament conference. E. I do not uh, agree with disarmaments. So, got a music premiere in 1931. Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart's musical America's Sweetheart premiered in, on Broadway at the Broadhurst Theater in New York City. Okay. Got some German history. Uh, technically, uh, Austrian history as well. Uh, 1933, Adolf Hitler proclaimed in a Marxism. Uh, well, I, I never thought I'd say this, but, uh, you know, I really wish he was right, but he wasn't. So, at least, uh, as far as, uh, this, you know, uh, quote, or situation goes, you know what I'm saying, like, I really wish it was the end of Marxism, but it was not, unfortunately. 1934, Howard Hansen's Mary Mount premiered in New York City. All right. I'm about to sneeze again, so give me a moment. I am sorry about that. Must be some stuff in the air. 1939, Stagecoach, uh, Western film directed by John Ford, starring Claire Trevor and John Wayne, premiered in Miami. All right. 1940, In the Mood by Glenn Miller, hit number one. All right. While that was going on, Tom and Jerry cartoon created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, debuted by MGM, Metro Gold Mayor. So dang. And I'm trying really hard to fight yet another sneeze, but. I, I don't know what's going on. It must be pollen in the air or something. I gotta get a Claritin, you know, soon. So, just give me a moment here. Arms started going numb. Not good. Moving on up to 1942, American or U.S. chemist. Uh, man, I can't even see. I'm sneezing so hard, I'm crying here. Wow. 1942, U.S. chemist James Franklin Hyde was granted a patent for fused silica. Ah. Now the first ever gold record. 1942, Glenn Miller was awarded the first ever gold record for selling one million copies of Chattanooga Choo Choo, Chattanooga Woo Ya. Now, historical event here, 1946, Charles Lucky Luciano was deported to Italy and never returned to the United States. Good. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Go back to where you came from and disrupt the world over there, not over here. You know? You come over here for opportunity, you start making crimes, start, you know, destroying everything, then go back to where you came from. Simple as that. Don't want any of that trash over here. 
1949, Arthur Miller stage drama Death of a Salesman starring Lee J. Cobb and Arthur Kennedy and directed by uh, Eliza Kazan opened at Moscow Theater, New York City, or Morosco Theater, New York City, running for 742 performances, winning six Tony Awards and a Pulitzer Prize. That's pretty cool. Not an election of interest in 1952, India holds its first general election. Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru remained in power. He's the first Prime Minister of India for a reason. 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower warns against U.S. intervention in Vietnam. And we didn't listen to him. We didn't listen to him during his, uh, fair, his uh, end of uh, his, uh, his term speech warning us about the military industrial uh, organization, uh, the dangers of spending, especially deficit spending, and look at where we're at today. 1961, Walter Piston's Seventh Symphony, commissioned by the Philadelphia Orchestra, premiered under direction of Eugene Ormandy, won 1961 Pulitzer Prize. Pretty good. Historic publication, 1966, Valley of the Dolls, by Walk by uh, Walkeline, uh, Jacqueline Susan, uh, was published by Bernard Guy's Associates in the U.S., sold over 31 million copies. That's pretty good. Damn good. 1968, U.S. two-time world champion Peggy Fleming comfortably won the Olympic women's figure skating gold medal at the Grenoble Winter Games. Nice. 1969, LSU Pete Maravich scored 66 despite losing to Tulane 101-94. And still, you know, did a good job. You know, he pulled his weight. The rest of his team slacked off, and that's why they lost. Got an album released in 1971, AMM Records, or... A&M Records released Tapestry, the second album by singer-songwriter Carole King, won four Grammy Awards, including the Album of the Year in 1972, topped the charts in four countries, and went on to sell over 30 million copies. Impressive. Damn good. Got another number one in the charts here, 1979, Do You Think I'm Sexy? Do You Think I'm Sexy? I think that's the song. Uh, by Rod Stewart, peaked at number one. Wow. He knows what he's he has that face. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. With a name like Rod Stewart talking about do you know he's sexy? Yeah. Eagle Eagle Maniac. <laughs> While I was going on in 1979, Alan Border was named the twelfth man for Australia. Only test cricket he missed. Okay. Cricket wicket! Still gotta do that every now and then. 1984, Soviet cross-country skier Nikolay Zimatov won a career fourth Olympic gold medal when he took out the 30k Olympic, uh, uh, the 30k event in Sarajevo, three gold in Lake Placid in 1980. Nice. Album released in 1986, John Lennon live in New York City. Album was released posthumously. Rest in peace, John Lennon. Your wife Yoko Ono murdered you to get the money, and another sneeze is just about to come, so I apologize. Man, I gotta get, like, filters on my windows or something, I swear. 1989, Celtic KC, Kansas City, Jones, uh, Cavalier, uh, well, KC, Kansas City. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. 1989, Celtic KC, Jones, and Cavalier, Jenny, oh, okay. So, Kansas City, Jones, and the Cavalier, Lenny Wilkins, was elected to the NBA Hall of Fame. Okay, I understand. I understand. Now, two different teams we're talking about. Okay. 1990, South African President F.W.D. Clerk announced Nelson Mandela will be freed on February 11th. Good. In the apartheid, F.W.D. Clerk, great, great leader. Thank you. 1991, the 41st uh, NBA All-Star Game at Charlotte Coliseum in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. East beats West, 116-114. Charles Berkeley, Philadelphia 76ers, forward. All right. 1992, Bonnie Blair won the 1992 Olympics first gold medal for the USA. Yes. While that was going on, Mike Tyson was convicted of raping Desiree Washington in Indiana. Hi. So we have uh, one sports person, uh, you know, doing well, and another one, not so much. 1993, Michael Jackson talks to Oprah Winfrey, aired on ABC, and drew an astounding 39.3 rating slash 56 share, 90 million people. 
football. I understood that last part. That's a lot of people. 1996 as well. Uh, actually, no. Three years later, 1996. IBM computer Deep Blue became the first computer to win a game of chess against a reigning human chess champion, Gary Kas Kasparov. Which, you know, you know, I was watching uh, Glenn Beck uh, just, I believe, yesterday talking about this... this uh, this AI and everything, everybody's going on like, you know, as he said, like, you know, oh, an AI defeated a human, ooh, and then, you know, now we have Jet Deep GPT and all this stuff that's going on, and really, really concerning things, and, uh, it's actually, a, a, a weapon to turn everybody into a, a target, so, anyway, 1997, O.J. Simpson jury reached decision of $25 million in punitive damages, dang we also have 2002, 51st NBA All-Star Game, 1st Union Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. West beats East, 135-120. Most valuable player, Kobe Bryant, the Mamba, LA Lakers forward. Hell yeah, wasn't he a point guard though at one point? I swear, uh, Kobe was, yeah, it says guard, but what is this F? So I guess he was a forward at the time, or for that game, I don't know. Anyway. 2004, Kanye West released his debut album, The College Dropout, 2005 Grammy Best Rap Album. Yeah, that was back before he went crazy. 2005 as well, His Royal Highness Charles, Prince of Wales, announced engagement to Camilla Par Parker Bowles. I don't give a flying crap. 2006, the 20th Winter Olympic Games opened in Turin, Italy. Luciano pa Pavarotti sung Nessim Dorma in his last ever performance. Pavarotti! Oh, yeah, they did a joke. I've talked about this before on, on uh, Futurama. Uh, Bender had the head of Pavarotti. He just, like, throws it away. Oh! 2008 50th Grammy Awards. Amy Winehouse won five awards, including the song Rehab. Herbie Hancock won Album of the Year. Dang. While that was going on, we have the BAFTA Awards. The 61st British Academy of uh, Film Awards, BAFTAs. Atonement was the best film. Ethan and Joel Cohn, best director. All right. Going to move on up to 2013, 55th Grammy Awards, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross won for Best Score Soundtrack for Visual Media for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. All right, we got some more BAFTAs here in 2013 as well. The 66th one, Argo, Ben Affleck, director, Daniel Day-Lewis and uh, Emmanuel Riva won. Okay. One year later, 2014, This Is How We Roll, sequel released uh, by Florida Georgia Line featuring Luke Bryan, later to, later to receive the Billboard Song of the Year in 2014. Got an Olympic gold in 2014 to double as well after winning Vancouver in 2010. Olympic uh, Moguls title, Canadian freestyle skater uh, Alexandre Belodio won second consecutive Olympic gold medal in Sochi, defeated teammate or bested teammate Mikhail Kingsbury. All right. 2015, U.S. comedian Jon Stewart announced he will be leaving Late Night Talk and Satirical News Program, The Daily Show, at the end of the year. That was a major loss. Now, it, it went over to uh, that idiot from South Africa who just really needs to shut his frickin' mouth. 2019, 61st Grammy Awards, Childish Gambino was first rapper to win Best Song and Best Record for This Is America, Best Album, Golden Hour, Casey Musgraves. Yep, that's a really trashy song. This is America! Boom! You know? It's really trash. 2019, 72nd uh, British Academy Film Awards, BAFTAs. Roma was the best film. Alfonso Cuarón was best director. Olivia Colman and Rami Malek were best actors. All right. You know, what, what does this guy look like? A discount Elon Musk or something in a way. I don't know. Anyway, 2021 as well. Uh, actually, we have a couple. Um... Huh. Let's see here. 2020, more than 30 bushfires were put out by heaviest rainfall for 30 years in New South Wales, Australia, helping end one of the worst bushfire seasons ever. 46 million acres were burnt, and over 1 billion animals were killed, as well as 34 people being dead. So 1 billion, 34 animals were killed. 2021, a 17,000-year-old conch shell was discovered to be the oldest known wind instrument after being reassessed by archaeologists originally found in uh, Marsilis Cave in the uh, Pyrenees. And while that was going on in 2021 as well, astronomers confirmed the planetoid named Far, Far Out as the most distant orbiting the sun, almost four times more distant than Pluto. That is impressive. 
Anyway, before we move on to the person that's audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything you wished we'd elaborated more about? Anything you saw, you know, in the, the non-highlighted section that you saw for a split second you would have liked to bring up? Anything you would have liked to say had you been here? Style dialogue in the comments section. Anyway, let's move on up into bursts. Starting us off in the year 1499, we have Thomas Platter, was a Swiss humanist, and he died in 1582. All right. With the last name Platter, Swiss humanist. So was he making a platter of Swiss cheese and human meat? You know, that sounds a little weird. We also have Boris Pasternak, 1890, was a Russian novelist and poet, Dr. Zivago, Trivago. So, uh, Nobel of 1958, born in Moscow, Russia, died in 1960. We also have Bill Tilden, 1893, a U.S. tennis player, U.S. Open 1920 through 25 and 29, Wimbledon 1920 and 21 as well as 30, French 1927 and 30, French Open, you know, all that stuff. Born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he died in 1953. So he was uh, 60 years old, either 59 or 61, 60, there we go. We also have Jimmy Durant, 1893, as a U.S. vaudeville radio and screen actor uh, and comedian. The Durant Moore Show, Frosty the Snowman, hey, piano player and singer Inka Dinka Do, make someone happy, known as the Schnooz, as the Schnozola, the Schnozola, oh wow, he really does have a Schnozola, look at that, born in Manhattan, New York, died in 1980. We also have Harold, Harold McMillan, 1894, British conservative politician and prime minister from 1957 through 63, born in London, died in 1986. Bertolt Brecht, this guy looks familiar, 1898, was a German poet and playwright, Mother Courage, born in Augsburg, Bavaria, died in 1956. Walter Hauser Bratain, uh, Bratain, I guess, 1902, was a, a U.S. physicist and Nobel laureate for his work on transistors, born in Amoy, China. What? 1987. Wow, he was born in China. Huh. That's interesting. Who else was born today? Ali Reynolds, 1919, a U.S. MLB pitcher, 1942 through 54, six-time All-Star, 1952 All uh, American League ERA leader, era. Um, I don't know what that stands for. Uh, Cleveland Indians and the New York Yankees, born in Bethany, Oklahoma, died in 1994. We also have uh, Leontian Price. 96 years old today, happy birthday, born on the state in 1927, a U.S. opera soprano, Porgy and Bess, uh, Ada, Metropolitan Opera, 1961 through 85, born in Laurel, Mississippi. That's really cool. Robert Wagner, 1930, a U.S. actor, It Takes a Thief, Switch, and Heart to Heart, born in Detroit, Michigan. He's 93 today. We also have Mark Spitz. 1950, a U.S. swimmer won then record seven Olympic gold medals in 1972. Born in Modesto, California. Hey, California. Set a record. It's been broken, but still set a record. We have Lee Heeson Lung, uh, 1952, Prime Minister of Singapore, People's Action Party, 2004 to present. Born in Singapore, so he's currently the Prime Minister of Singapore. So happy birthday. He is 71 today. Greg Norman, 1955, Australian golfer. British Open 1986 through, uh, as well as 93. Born in Mount Isla, Queensland. Happy birthday to you, mate. We also have Laura Dern, 1967, a U.S. actress, Jurassic Park, Mask, and Smooth Talk. Born in Los Angeles, California. Nice. Elizabeth Banks, 49 today. Born on the state 1974, what is a U.S. actress, the 40 year old virgin, man on the ledge. Born in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. All right. Justin Gatlin, 1982, a U.S. sprinter, Olympic gold 100 meter in 2004, born in Brooklyn, New York City. Emma Roberts, 32 today, 1991, a U.S. actress, Unfabulous Scream Queens, born in Rhinebeck, New York. Those are interesting earrings. They look stiff. Like, they look like, like they don't free flow or something. They're not, it's not a chain. We have it, Shirley Grace Mortez, 1997, a U.S. actress, Kick-Ass, The Fifth Wave, and The Addams Family, born in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, so she plays a, a little girl. Okay. And she has to, she's got to be playing um, Wednesday in The Addams Family. Moving on up into death, starting us off at 1126, we have William IX, Duke of Aquitaine and poet, dies at the age of 54. Temur Khan, 1307, was the second emperor of the Yuan Dynasty from 1294 through 1307. Grandson and successor to Kublai Khan, died at the age of 41. Jeez. 
We also have Ernest uh, Teodoro Moneta, 1918, was an Italian journalist, soldier, and pacifist. Nobel Peace Prize in 1907, died at the age of 84. Wilhelm Rontgen, 1923, was a German physicist who discovered X-rays, got the Nobel Prize in 1901, died of cancer at the age of 77. I believe this is the guy uh, whose namesake is used for the uh, the Rontgen, um, you know, uh, scale for radioactive, uh, you know, determination. 1932, Edgar Wallace passed away on this date. He was an English novelist, playwright, and journalist. The Terror, the Four Just Men, who created King Kong, died of the Beatus at 76. Wow, so he's the creator of King Kong. Well, rest in peace, man. Pius XI, 1939, was Italian... Th so was the Italian 259th Pope from 1922 through 39, died at the age of 81. We also have Laura Ingalls Wilder, uh, 1957, was a U.S. author, Little House on the Prairie, died at the age of 90. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That's, uh, that's pretty, you know, 90s, nothing to sneeze at. So, despite me sneezing all the time in the beginning of this show. Uh, but yeah, rest in peace, Little House on the Prairie, good stuff. We also have Alex Haley, 1992, a U.S. writer, autobiography of Malcolm X, and Roots, died at the age of 70. Rest in peace. Uh, Arthur Miller, 2005, a U.S. playwright, Death of a Salesman, and The Crucible, died of heart failure while battling bladder cancer at age 39, 89. Uh, wow, 50 years difference. Uh, well, you have to, like, take a, a forced piss or something? How do you heart fail while urinating? That sounds, that sounds like, uh, like, uh, Elvis Presley type of death. Shirley Temple died on the state in 2014. She was a U.S. actress and diplomat, famous 1930s child star, Bright Eyes and Heidi, died of natural causes at 85. You have Mike Illich, 2017, a U.S. businessman, founded Little Caesars Pizza, as well as the owner of the Detroit Red Wings and Tigers, died at 87. Little Caesars ain't that bad, except the hot reddies are start starting to get really expensive. Larry Flint, 2021, died on this date just two years ago, was a U.S. magazine publisher for Hustler, died of heart failure at 78. Clearly, we all can figure out what he was doing. Probably still making that face, too. And that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of past events daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time, which is 11 Mountain, 12 Central, 1 o'clock Eastern. And any other time zones you Google exists, you can figure it out yourself. Anyway, until you catch us uh, tomorrow, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Till then, toodles! <laughs>